It's here. It's now. It's always been. We don't see it all the time. Even though it's in every direction. While we are distracted by the noise and task of everyday life, it's there, waiting for us. The ocean, open, endless. The land merely an intermission. We call what we do a sport, but it doesn't have bleachers. There are no bases or end zones. But how else do you categorize it? It began as a skill. One we sharpened because we had to. An invention of survival. But today, it's something else entirely. A personal challenge a chance to be part of a tribe. We're scratching an evolutionary itch. Fishing isn't just rods and reels, tactics and tackle. It's people, places, family. It's more than a lifestyle or a livelihood. It's life. In the past season, SFTV captured it from all sides. The destination set the mood for each trip. A heavy load of flora and fauna that surrounds historic lodges and newly discovered honey holes. Wherever the location, be it local or exotic, fishing gives you a starring role in your own adventure. Sport Fishing Television is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By Yellowfin your legacy. By Simrad, go with confidence. And by Mercury Marine, number one on the water. Driven to Fish, powered by Ram Trucks.
Sitka, Alaska. Venice, Louisiana. The Panamanian Rainforest. A range of locations and environments. To the naked eye, they don't seem related, but they are. Tackle shops and tribal dancers. Gulf front lodges and age old fish shacks. They rely on the business of fishing, an entire localized economy that prospers from the anglers that come to town or never left. You can just look at that skyline in there. When I first started, there was only one tall building. We relied on all these buildings to find all of our spots. Now that they have so many buildings in their downtown, I couldn't find any of these spots without my GPS now. You know, I really had a, a good background of the whole area. Got to see a lot of stuff from diving and, you know, pretty unique spots that it's one of the few inlets anywhere near us that's uh, very deep water. This is why I'm here, just for that, and, and that you don't hear anything. There's more water here than a guide or any man can ever explore in his entire life. So on my days off is a chance to just fish a stretch of water I've never been before. And then there's this. Cameras do the best they can to capture such sights. When it's right in front of you, there's nothing like it. Sometimes it's about where fishing takes you. You see these environments that you can't just see from sitting on a couch. And you have to go there. And the best part of it is it's not what you see, it's how it inspires you. You start to realize how one animal or one plant connects to the next. And that we rely on each other whether we stand on two limbs or none. From dry land to open waters, the amount of wilderness and the creatures that inhabit it is staggering. In these destinations, fish are only one member of the wild supporting cast. Through all the journeys of the past year, we were witness to trends, developments, and history. Some in the public eye, others hidden and unspoken. Science and conservation, together, start a new perspective. It makes you stop and think, what can we do? What's our role in all of this? Sport Fishing Television, powered by Ram Trucks, is being brought to you by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. By Penn, let the battle begin. And by the Florida Keys and Key West, come as you are. When things get heavy, distractions help. Life shifts into fifth gear, and something has to hit that pressure valve. No time for buffering or downloading. We need a click now. This show forced us to stop and listen, and we were rewarded with scientific discoveries, breakthroughs, and the often troubled intersection of our past choices and future options. West Palm Beach Fishing Club, I've been part of since I came down here to college. It's a very, very old club, one of the oldest in the country. They do a lot for conservation, and it's really a great club. Our forefathers here at the fishing club, it's amazing that they had the foresight to know that 
hey, these animals are much more valuable catching them and letting them go than catching them and putting them on the dock. Yeah. Ernest Hemingway, of all people, sponsored a trophy in the Silver Sailfish Derby, and it was that trophy there. It's called the Old Man in the Sea Trophy. This year, the legislature came up with as much as $200 million for the Everglades. This is remarkable. A couple, three years ago, this would have never happened. But I think people have rallied together enough, whether politicians, environmental groups, or just citizens, and really pushed for this. If you dig in and get involved and commit yourself, good things will happen. These are recycled oyster shells, and these oysters are going to be used to stop erosion, so they'll create new oyster habitats. So oysters are what we call a keystone species. Oysters also help out with water quality. A single oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day, and that's as much water as you put in a bathtub. One of the biggest things that we have going with, with restoring coral reefs is not only the health of, of the ocean, but it's restoring the fishery habitat that is so important to a healthy fishery. So healthy reefs equal healthy fisheries, and that's really a good way to look at it when you're out there as an angler. I looking at the past uh, successful things such as building forests and building mangroves back. Uh, we decided to see what we could do with growing corals back knowing that we thought it was going to be a slow process but it's a game changer now. In fact uh, most people around the world do not even believe what success we're getting. The first thing we have to do with permit is kind of figure out the basics on where they live and how they move. So the best way to do that is with tagging. So the first thing we did was use dart tags. Uh, which are the type of tags that uh, anglers can stick in fish into the muscle tissue. The tags have identification numbers on them. They write down where they caught the fish, when and how big the fish was. And then if somebody recaptures that fish, they call us with the ID number on that fish and tell us where and when they caught it, how big it was, so we can figure out general permit movement patterns and how fast they grow. There's definitely a lot more people here and there's a lot more people on the water, but there's still plenty of fish to be caught out here. Coming up, coming up. <laughs> nice one, buddy. That's what it's all about. Yes, sir. <laughs> let them go, let them grow. We've taken trophies and sustenance from these waters. So we owe them the next tagging program or coral reef restoration project. <laughs> nice release, dude. <laughs> the people that we visited this season came from all walks of life from the southern tip of Florida to the Alaskan Panhandle, down to Central America. The guides and locals we fished with brought a sense of brotherhood that spans oceans, gulfs, and lagoons. There's a tough fishery for new people here in that it's, everything looks fishy. Every point it does. Everywhere you look looks like it should hold a snook. And it takes a lot of time to sort out uh, what actually does, what actually doesn't. Yeah, Colin. Woo, boy! Stay, Grammy! Yet each individual drew us into their own home waters, shared their backstories, and the skills they developed along the way. Something I did just to get outside when I was a kid, ride my bike down to the river, spend all day there till the sun went down. What drives fishing guides? Most of them just want to make a living being on the water to get paid for the thing they skipped their previous day job to do. You know, I mean, I keep guiding, so like, finding new things and catching stuff and watching people smile. Modern day explorer, you know? Exploring they already explored. Get another one. I really can't see myself doing anything else. I never have a morning where I wake up and I'm like, oh man, I gotta go to work today. Can't be being on the water fishing, paid in lifestyle for sure. Guides that I have to be in a cubicle like the rest of the world. Everyone who gets into guiding was a fisherman first. In this world, love for the water is a job skill. How great is that? My dad said, son, what are you going to do? Go to work. And I said, dad, no. I'm going to be a backcountry guide in the Florida Keys. Roosters in Panama, tuna in Louisiana, sails in South Florida. We rounded out this season with a motley medley of species. Sport Fishing Television is being brought to you by Ram Trucks, powered by Ram Trucks. Guts, glory, Ram. By King Sailfish Mounts, 
for that once in a lifetime catch. Buy Costa sunglasses, see what's out there. And buy the Florida Keys and Key West. Come as you are. With sport fishing, you can't see your opponents. And for a hiding place, they've got the ocean. Gotta like those odds. It's your primary party of big fish though, right? Yeah, I tend to try and stay on the big fish when they're around. And you know, all we've caught is big fish. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the goal. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big fish and a lot of current. He's got the line freight already. Yeah. So we're just gonna have to ease him up. And as soon as he gets somewhere that my hands can touch him, I'm gonna block onto that thing like no one's business and not let go. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> Kidding me? Oh! I won't come up. You got him? Nice. <laughs> Woo. That was fun. Thank God, dude. <laughs> Thank God. There he is. There he is, coming up on top. See what he does, yeah. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't hook up. Stop, buddy. Oh, oh! There he is. Nice bite. Who's stop. Specimen right there. This right here is what this lagoon is known for. Make him jump. Make him jump. Yeah, he's pretty. He's a good looking one too, dude. Yeah, he's pretty. Come on. Come on. Bring him to us. There you go. Nice dude. <laughs> Get him, though. These fish are valued, but in the sportsman community, they aren't a commodity. They are a memory with a friend, a family member, and in many cases, coming up, coming up. a downright stranger. <laughs> Why do we keep doing it? That's awesome. Is it the evolutionary itch or something more? It's a pretty unique place, especially to me mainly just from growing up in the area and fishing it from when I was really little with my dad. A lot of cool memories. Yeah. I had an older brother and sister. My mom used to watch and my dad would bring me on the boat and had a wooden crib that was screwed into the deck of his boat and he'd throw me in the crib and take me out fishing with him. Part of it is legacy. Handing down the spider hitch and palomar knot to our young ones like heirlooms. Trusting they'll do the same one day. A season filled with thousands of words and countless images. Hopefully, they inspired a few firsts. A, a first cast into that nearby lake or a first father-son fishing charter. One day to make it happen, Captain. Why do we do it? It keeps us connected to the distant past of our ancestors, to the recent past with our mentors, to the future with those we teach. They are the next chapter in a story that began thousands of years ago. The torch is yours. Keep it burning. Pass it on. Some devote their lives to the chase. Others, only a few hard-earned weekends a year. When you really think about it, the fishing community is a peculiar group. We do something for entertainment, 
that her predecessors would have been relieved to go to the grocery store to do. The value of life is seeing what's in this world. So fishing has really helped me go to places and see what the value of life is. These are what I call the good old days of tomorrow. Whether for food for the family, an excuse to bond with a fellow human being, or the adrenaline rush that comes with hooking a leaping tarpon, anglers owe the sea. Fishing needs us to care. Protect the ocean, love the gulf, save the bay, because that's it. There are no do-overs. No one is in the bullpen. So let's do this right. <laughs>